One. Welcome to the Mysterious Domain Movie Palace for Christopher Lee's birthday, which is May 27th. Now, I had quite a decision to make about which film I wanted to show because I had two in mind. But I've decided to show Maria Bava's The Whip and the Body, which came out in 1963. And the re there's a several reasons why I decided on this one. One, because it's a Mario Bava film, and we have Barbara Steele in a Mario Bava film. In fact, Mario Bava's directorial debut, which is Black Sunday. And also because Christopher Lee looks so handsome in this film. I don't think he's ever looked this good. And he plays, you know, kind of a Byron-esque, kind of a... Heathcliff character, he's very dark and mysterious, and he just looks so fantastic. The, uh, the dark makeup and everything, it brings out his Italian side, because he's also a Carandini, so he's a, like an Italian nobility or something, and he just looks it in this role. Mario Bava, I just want to talk about Mario Bava a little bit, because he was in a way, the pioneer of this kind of Italian Gothic horror genre of films. And he's, you know, he's called the master of Italian horror, the master of the macabre, you know, he has these names. And he made them on relatively low budgets. And the thing that elevates them is his visual sense, his cinematography, and just the artistic way that he uh, uses beautiful imagery, the lushness of the imagery, and also the symbolism. And though Black Sunday, I think, is fairly straightforward in that regard, the whip in the body is symbolic on many, many levels. And in a way, I've you know I've seen a few. I haven't seen all of his films. I've seen Lisa and the Devil, which I like quite a lot. I've seen Black Sabbath, which um, I really like the one with the house with the uh, drop of water, I guess it is. That, that, uh, that house is like the ultimate in the decaying mansion uh, department of my uh, favorite things. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> the whip in the body is on the surface something that YouTube might not approve of, so fingers crossed. On the surface, it's a certain type of relationship. But to me, that is not really what the film is about. The real antagonist in this film is the dark, the darkness. In fact, the film is really dark. Even the external shots are like twilight. There's never any real light. And what it really brings to mind for me is that back before electricity, people lived by candlelight and firelight and moonlight and sunlight. They didn't have any other sources of light. So if you're in a castle which has all these corridors and these nooks and crannies and unused rooms and probably maybe whole wings of the castle aren't being used. Cobwebs are gathering. You've got the ancestral library and the armor and the, all these old things in this castle. And the only light you have is a candle as you're walking through or a fireplace which throws shadows on the walls and everything else, right? I mean, this is how people lived for millennia. So we have this drama that, that happens where there's a relationship. Now, Christopher Lee plays Kurt Menliff. You know, the Italians really like this name, Kurt. 
plays Kurt Menlif, and Kurt Menlif is the estranged son of this noble family, and a, a servant girl um, was in love with him, and she killed herself. That's right in the opening of the film. Because he is devilishly handsome. So he'd been carrying on this relationship with this woman, Vivanka, who's played by Dahlia Levy, who is an Israeli actress, who has a kind of serpent-like beauty, and they really have a weird chemistry together. They're in a very dark relationship. And what I'm realizing as I'm watching this film, and they're all in the dark, is that Bava is a poet, and he's exploring the idea of women's basic fear of men. It's like a, it's like a primal fear of being overpowered, being overwhelmed, being uh, taken, being taken against your will, being dominated, and being killed. Women do have this deep primordial fear of that side of men, which is why when we've had chivalry, you know, that sort of created a situation where, where women could feel safe around men because men were taught to keep that side of themselves in check around women. And so this is a, a deep theme, I think, in this film, but there's also men's fear of women on a completely different level. There's also a degree of a male fear of women, but there's also a degree of a men fear of other men. Kurt's old and dying father, played by Gustavo Donardo, is afraid of his son and had banished him from the house. But mainly, it's the gothic thing. It's exploring the female psyche. And so all the shadows in the house and what's going on behind that door or what's going on behind that curtain or what's going on outside or who's walking like who who's coming in the into the the crypt when she's in there right who you know and and it's like you never know even in your own house you got to watch your back i i think you know there's just so much about this film that's so interesting and I think Christopher Lee also, um, now his voice in this is dubbed, which I was sort of puzzling because whoever they got to dub his voice is very close. And I thought, is he dubbed or is that him just with a bad, a bad recording? But it's, he actually sounds like the guy that dubbed the voice for John Richardson in um, Black Sunday. You know, he does a pretty good job, but apparently Christopher Lee couldn't stick around to do the voiceovers. I guess that's how they did it. He couldn't stick around to do the voiceovers because he had another job. So he left, and later on when he realized how good the film was, in fact, he felt that it was one of his best European films, he regretted not sticking around to do his own voiceovers because... It is it really as a, I mean, it's not a nice character that he plays. He's not like, you know, lovable or anything, but he's just a smoldering, broodingly handsome. Like I said, he's like, I don't know why he never played Heathcliff. So I, I just thought that the film deserves to be his birthday film. Now, we also had an actor called Tony Kendall. Now, he's also very handsome, and he plays the brother of, Christopher Lee's character, Kurt. And he is married to Vivanka, Christopher Lee's um, ex-girlfriend, I guess you'd say. <laughs> but he's really in love with the, the cousin who's played by Ida Ghali. Um, she worked a lot. She made a ton of films. She made a lot of spaghetti westerns and giallo films as Evelyn Stewart. And in this film, she's Eile Oberon. So she was most famously in um, Lucino Visconti's movie of The Leopard. And she was in La Dolce Vita. But she has worked 
quite a lot. And she plays the cousin of Vivanka, who is the real love is between her and the brother, um, played by Tony Kendall. And then there's an actress who I used to get confused with the woman with the big teeth in Suspiria. I used to think they, they look a little similar, but then I'd say, well, it must be some good acting for her to get them big teeth going, but um, it's not the same actress. It's uh, Harriet White Medine. And she plays uh, the sort of servant part that, now you get the, the servant part that's played by Helga Linney, and she, but she's really young and attractive, and she's usually a love triangle type servant. Whereas Harriet White plays the older lady servant who plays an ambiguous character that you don't really know if she's good or evil or in on it or not in on it, but she's kind of always there as a kind of shadowy figure. You recognize her when you see her because she does a lot of these. She was actually a dental hygienist in her youth and she worked on the teeth of John Fitzgerald Kennedy and Robert Kennedy. So those are some... Those are some major chompers there, major teeth. Those are some major teeth. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and then we have, um, as I said, Gustavo Donardo, and then we have Luciano Pigosi, who is in, a, he's another one that plays this sort of Igor character or the, the, the servant character with a limp. You know, he's always plays these roles. You recognize him from other things. He's also been called Alan Collins. And he's also in, uh, like, Terror Creatures from the Grave, playing the same role. He's in Blood in Black Lace, and of course he's in The Whip and the Body. But he also is quite a prolific actor. So there's kind of the lay of the land and some little backstories and some trivia. But it is Christopher Lee's birthday on May 27th, and apparently a subscriber told me it's also Vincent Price's birthday on May 27th, and then, of course, Peter Cushing's birthday is on May 26th. So the three amigos, right? We have these three Geminis who are the masters of the communicative arts and create some kind of uh, mischievous excitement for us. And, um, yeah, and with their, you know, split personalities, right? <laughs> <laughs> they are the iconic stars of the same era. And uh, I want to just say happy birthday, Christopher Lee. We love you. Um, for younger people, I know you know him mostly as Saruman and the Lord of the Rings, but he's been making films. He was making films for 60 years, you know, it was starting with The Corridor of Mirrors, which is on my channel. The Corridor of Mirrors climbed to the top in less than a month. So many people watched that film. But I just wanted to enlighten some of the younger people who may not know that, you know, he played Count Dracula in seven Hammer Horror films, but he's played Dracula about nine times. He considered his best film to be The Wicker Man, and he was also in five Tim Burton films. And I'm thinking, I don't. I'm going to have to check into that because I don't remember seeing him in the Tim Burton films that I've seen. I certainly haven't seen all of them. But, you know, I know Vincent Price was in Edward Scissorhands. I think that was his last film. So anyway, on Christopher Lee's birthday, I hope you all, like, celebrate with a, I don't know, whatever you celebrate with. I don't know, what would Chris, Christopher Lee seems like he'd be uh, like a, a whiskey drinker. <laughs> and, and you know, I put that, that theater curtain in the beginning with the music. That's supposed to be time for you to go and get your popcorn and stuff, right? <laughs> Here it is, time to go out and get the popcorn, find a seat, and get comfortable, and please enjoy The Whip and the Body.
Don't. You mustn't. It was all such a long time ago, Georgia. Not for me, Katya. Not for me. It's the blood of my daughter on that blade. I cling to my hatred as I cling to this dagger. Before I die, I swear I'll see this dagger plunged into his throat. As I saw it in Tanya's, because of him. <laughs> Crying won't help now. is back. Georgia. Yes. Kurt is back. You can't stop the hand of fate. My lord, Kurt is back. What did you say? Kurt is back. Yes, Losat. I am back. I told you never to come back. <laughs> Who are you trying to frighten, Kurt? No one. I came back because I heard of your marriage. Good luck. My compliments, Nadenka. Thank you, Kurt. Tell the truth, Kurt. What do you want? My dear brother, I've already told you. I came back to compliment you on your choice of a wife. You must be tired, Kurt. Kurt, you're not my son, you're a serpent. You like to make others suffer. You seduced Tanya and then abandoned her, causing her to kill herself. The same old story. Father, you promised. He didn't come back to seek my forgiveness. You're so wrong, Father. I also came back for that. No, I don't believe you. I'm afraid. Are you afraid of me, Christian? That which was once mine is now yours. Now it is you who are the favorite son. I've never been afraid of you. As far as I'm concerned, you can stay if you want to. All right, Kurt. You can stay. I've never had a warmer welcome.
wonderful to see things being born. To see them born and to see them die. Let me go. My pretty little cousin. You're still in love with my brother, aren't you? You wouldn't exactly refuse him. You he... miserable wretch! You, you always wanted to marry him, didn't you, Katya? And instead, you shouldn't hate me, you know. After all, Kristen's marriage was a bitter blow for you, too. <sighs> Poisoned? No, that's not the way it'll be, Kurt Manliff. You'll die in the same way you made my daughter die. I obtained forgiveness from the masters. I would not presume to that of the servants. Ah, here are the masters. I see you've already had your tea, Kurt. Yes. I'm not in the habit of waiting. Nobody asked you to. You did well to remind me. You shouldn't treat him like that. You'll only make things worse. You don't know him well, if you think he could be worse. There was a time when you weren't so frightened when I came through there to say goodnight to you. Remember. You showed me the way. I've never forgotten it. What do you want? You have forgiven me. But I can't remain here unless all my rights are restored to me. My title. My patrimony. I shall soon be dead. I have not enough time to put you to the test. Whatever was yours, you forfeited. Forever. You did it yourself with your infamy. Be careful, Father. Get out of here! Get out, I tell you! I think you've got something against me. Isn't that true? You're wrong. I've nothing for or against you.
Are you afraid of me? You were fond of me once. Yes, once. Changed, I see. You always loved violence. to search the grounds. Where is Novenka? And how should I know? And that whip? This? I found it on the road, a few yards outside the gate. I've been looking at my estates. It'll soon be night. It'll be harder to find her. She's right. You'd better hurry. Let's go. They make a handsome couple, don't they? And yet I have the impression that Katya isn't particularly anxious to find a banker. You don't agree? You're an old fool, Georgia. Let's light a lantern. I want to have a look in the moats.
My lady. My lady. Georgia! Georgia! I found her! My lady. God be praised. I thought she was dead. Let's take her up to the house. Come, help me carry her. She'll come around very soon now. It must have been fear more than anything else. She must have been thrown from the saddle. Kurt. Where is Kurt? Go call it. Yes, sir. Nothing serious. Only some welts on her back. As though... As though somebody has whipped her, my lord. Go, go on then. Yes, sir. Kurt. <gasps> Father, don't look. I had to stand the sight of him alive. It, it can't be any worse now. Ah, oh, look, look, the dagger, the dagger. It's Tanya's. He's died the same death she did. Tanya! Tanya! Not rush now in peace! <laughs> Have mercy on me, O God, according to thy great mercy, and according to the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out mine iniquity. Wash me yet more from mine iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge mine iniquity, and my sin is always before me. Against thee only have I sinned, and done evil before thee. For behold, I was conceived in iniquities, and in sins did my mother conceive me. Turn away thy face from my sins, cast me not away from thy face, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord. Absolve, O Lord, the souls of all the faithful departed from every bond of sin, and by the help of thy grace may they be enabled to escape the avenging judgment. O God, by whose mercy the souls of the faithful find rest, bless this grave, release the souls of all those buried here, that they may rejoice with thy saints forever. Through Christ our Lord, amen.
Now our son, Kurt Menlis, is ready for the last judgment. But someday the one who killed him shall also stand judgment by our Lord. Let us pray for them. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Who is it? It is I, Christian. What do you want? I want to speak to you, Father. I'm listening, son. I... I wanted to speak to you about Kurt. I must know. It is hard for me to ask this, but I've got to know. What? Everybody was away. There was only you in the castle. You and Kurt. You... You dare ask if I... I have always obeyed you, Father. As you well know. I have never dared to question you. Get out! Out of obedience, I even agreed to marry the woman you had once intended for my brother. But now I must know. What do you want to know? If it was you who killed him, it's an act of justice. Get out! Get out!
What's wrong? Tell me. I saw Losad. He said he saw a shadow moving in the chapel. And a light. Losad is crazier than you. It was obviously only the reflection of the moon. Oh, 
Gertrude. The Venger. Kurt. Evenko, what's the matter? It was Kurt. He was watching me. I saw him. No, Kurt. It's all over. Try to rest. You only had an hallucination. If you want, I can stay in here with you tonight. You mustn't be afraid. No, go to bed. I want to be alone. All right, dear. I'll leave my door open. Call me if you need anything.
What's wrong? Tell me, what happened? Kurt was here, alive, and his boots full of mud, as though, as though he had climbed out of the grave. Oh, calm down, please. You've had a nightmare. There's no one here but me. Look, so was all a nightmare. He was the one who did this to me. And besides, there are the footprints. What footprints? They were there. It was only a bad dream. There's nothing there. Look for yourself. No, no, it wasn't a dream. He was here, I tell you. He was here. I saw the footprints and his hand. Oh, my God, his horrible hand. It came out of the shadows like a green spider. Oh, help me, Christian, help me. and you never will.
My lady, you. I heard noises and I came down to look. I thought... What did you think? Nothing. The dead can't move from their tombs. Maybe they do, if they don't find peace. Yes, we were happy then. Now my life is empty and meaningless. Do you remember that lake we used to go to, that one up in the mountains? You used to sail with me in my boat. You were just a little girl then. Yes, I used to follow you everywhere. Christian, why did you do that? Katya, listen. We can still be happy. No, it's too late now. It's too late. No, no, dear, don't say that. It's never too late. I've always loved you. And you love me, don't you? Yes, Christian, I love you and I'll always love you. But you're married now. <laughs>
You'd better leave, Georgia. Besides, there's nothing you can do now. Just like Kurt. The dagger has disappeared. The Count told me that... that it was here. It's his revenge. He'll kill us all, because we're all to blame. Stop talking nonsense, Navenka. Are you trying to drive us crazy? Someone will pay for this, Father, be it man or ghost. I promise you. I've been looking for you. What for? I don't know. I thought perhaps if I was near, I could help you. No, dear. The only thing that will help me now is to be able to get revenge. Leave me alone now, please. In a while, I'll come back to you. It's me, Lawsat. I didn't mean to frighten you, miss. I've been watching Christian. I'm worried about him. Listen, I've been wanting to ask you something for some time. What? The night when we were searching the moats for Nervenka. Yes? Did you stay all the time with Christian? Yes, I think so. Why? Are you sure that he never left you? Never for a moment? No, but why do you ask? You don't think they're Christian. Why, I don't think anything. It's absurd.
why the old count too? Why? Georgia, you're the one who's got the dagger in your hand. You can tell me everything, Katya. I don't pretend to condemn you. Oh, stop it. Where did you get that dagger? You know very well, Katya. Don't force me to say it. Oh, stop it, please. You had a reason to kill Kurt, not I. Tell me where you found that knife. Under the mattress of your bed, Katya. <gasps> no! Christian! Christian, I know who killed your father. What? Yes. I could have killed Kurt. Oh, you bet I could. But the Count, no. I'd never kill him. You understand? If you found that knife there, then you or somebody else put it there. It wasn't I, Katya. Not I. Throw away that cursed knife. I don't want to ever see it again. Throw it away. No, Katya, no. It's not possible. You don't believe me. You think I'm lying. Answer me. I don't know. I don't know. I can't possibly imagine that one of us is a murderer. No, it's absurd. But still, somebody here killed him. But now we know, Christian. No. Katya, no. You're a coward. You're afraid to face the truth. Kurt in your place. Kurt! Kurt. It's always him you think of. Kurt instead of me. He's the one you've really always loved. It's not true. It's not true. And you've always wanted to marry him. I've always known it. If that's why you killed him, it was a useless crime. I hated him. I hated him. I've always hated him. I hated him! I heard screaming. I thought it came from your father's room. She's not here. Let's look in her room. The footprints lead toward the garden. Someone carried her off. You'd better wait here. Christian, don't go alone.
Lovat! Oh. What are you doing here? Oh, it's you, my lord. Oh. Where have you taken the Venka? Me? There were footprints from boots just like you have. I don't know anything. I was making my usual rounds of the castle when I thought that I saw somebody moving around in here. Don't lie to me, Lassat. Oh, no. There was no one else in here but you! My lord, you don't think that... Quiet! Come along. Footprints are coming from the secret passage. Venka. How is Nevenka? Delirious. She said it was Kurt who carried her there. She also said that he whipped her, then carried her to the crypt and put her in the tomb. We've got to help Katya, do something. This time I even heard Kurt's laugh. But I still can't bring myself to believe in ghosts. I know it's difficult to understand, but what do we know about what happens after death? 
I almost believe he's alive. Alive? But you saw him too. You saw him when he was placed in the casket. And with our own eyes, we both saw him buried. I don't really believe that Navenka saw him out there. No. No, there's no other possible explanation. Kurt's still alive and hiding someplace in the castle. I've got to find him. If not, I'll go crazy. We'll all go crazy. For a moment, I even suspected you. I even suspected myself. Then, if what you say is true, he could have hidden the dagger in my room. I'm afraid, Christian. I'm afraid. Calm down, Katya. It's all right. I'll go and look. same. What are you going to do? Open the coffin. Help me. Carry it over there. do that. Yes, you will, because you love me, and your love for me is greater than anything in this world. I hate you. I hate you. I hate you. 
I... recognizable. It could be anybody. The clothes are Kurt's. Let's put it back in the tomb, for God's sake. No. What are you doing now? I'll destroy it. Where are you, Kurt? I'm coming, Kurt. I've never been afraid of you. My lord! Oh, sir, what happened? Are you hurt? Come on, it's not important. Hurry! It's locked from the inside. We'll have to go by way of the chapel. Yes, you're right.
Why did I do it, Kurt? Why? I love you, Kurt. Only you. But there's an end to everything, Kurt. No! No, Rebecca, no! She was the one. She killed your brother and your father. Yes. Perhaps she was possessed. She was convinced Kurt was alive, and she killed herself, thinking she was killing him. Let's hope she's free of him forever. Oh. 